All right, guys. Today we have a book uh, by Edred Thorson. Um, I like his material, especially on the Norse topics, because it's so easy to read the way it's written. Um, I was getting into the roots of the Germanic runes and the language itself and found the Teutons. The Teutonic people are the origins of the Germanic runes, language, etc. Um, the Teutonic runes are the origins of the Roman and Greek alphabets. They are uh, they're the beginning to European written language. Let's get into it. The introduction. On a lonely windswept hill, under the boughs of a gnarled oak, a man in a blue coke carves elder runes in a stave of yew wood. He calls out the names of the runes in the tongue used by his ancestors 2,000 years ago, forging a direct link between himself and the holy power of the runes, and between his time and place and that of his ancestors. Several dozen folks gather themselves before the altar in stone, glinting with the rays of the midsummer sun, and sing out the songs of celebration, giving holy gifts to their elder gods for everlasting peace and prosperity. In this time and in this place, they have become whole with the spirit of their ancestral troth or faith. High atop a wooden platform, a woman sits in trance, her long blue cape flowing around her. The low chance of her helpers take her down into a world she knows well, and from which she will bring wisdom and lore about times gone by and times yet to be. All of these folks are practicing forms of what can be called Teutonic magic. Teutonic magic is essentially the whole spectrum of magic and spiritual disciplines and traditions practiced by the Teutons over the expanse of time, beginning when this eldritch folk emerged from the mists until the very present day. It is practically impossible to present the whole truth of a religious tradition or a system of magic practiced by an entire group of people over hundreds of years. There are, however, great truths and deep secrets about how the Teutonic folk practiced their troth and magic in days of yore and how they practice them now that will be of interest to all of those who read this little book. Here we will explore not one, but several great traditions of the Teutonic magic. We will look at the essence of rune magic and of the scyther. It's a word that I had an issue with. I put it up on the board. S-E-I-D-H-R. I have seen it say that it is pronounced Seder, and I have seen it pronounced Cider. Um, I like the D as the T-H in the pronunciation of it, so it would be more like Cider. Uh, I'm sure Jackson Crawford will rip my pronunciations apart. I'm, I'm not his level. The two main practices of the timeless and pure forms of Teutonic magical practice. We will examine the traditions of the great Toth of the Teutons or the religious faith as it is practiced today. Furthermore, we'll take a look at the magical teachings that have been influenced, shaped, or reformed by the Teutonic mind and that have subsequently become the occult standards of Western tradition. Who are the Teutons? The Teutons are known from ancient times as a group of people who originally spoke the Germanic dialect group of languages. Some prefer to use the term Teutonic to avoid the uh, confusion between the words Germanic and German. But in reality, the terms Teutonic and Germanic are synonymous. Directly descended from this ancient Teutonic stock are the English, German, Dutch, Icelandic, Danish, Norwegian, and Swedish people. What is more, they left their indelible mark on the cultures of the French, 
Spanish, and Italian nations as well. As they found the first true states in those lands, oh, excuse me, as they founded the first true states in those lands after the fall of the Roman Empire, these people not only had a tradition of religion and mythology unique to themselves, although closely related to their Indo-European brethren, Celts, Slavs, Romans, Greeks, Persians, and Indians, but they also had a unique magical system that has come down to us for the most part in the form of rune magic. The magical and religious teachings of these people are most clearly laid out in the ancient texts known as the Eddas, of which there is a younger Edda, a prose Edda, an elder or poetic version, and these works are encoded the mysteries of the Teutonic peoples. These can be understood on many levels. In the elder days, there were many more sources of the tradition, but Christian missionaries destroyed many of them. The chief target of their ire seems to have been the teachings and traditions surrounding the goddess Freya, whose poetry and songs, many of them erato-magical, were singled out for utter obliteration. The traditions that survived the best were those connected to the god Woden, whose loyalists were to be found in the Teutonic royal houses. Somewhat insulated from the influences of new religions, this circumstance is somewhat responsible for the misguided assumption that the Teutonic tradition is a male-dominated one. This is not especially true. It is just a matter of what has been able and what has survived in written tradition. Now is the time to revive fully the elder ways of the goddess Freya. In modern times, the Teutonic stream of magic has been largely ignored during the great magical revival in the Western world. There were revivals of the Germanic tradition in the 1500s, again in the 1600s in Sweden, and in the late 1800s and early 1900s in Germany. But only in the past 20 years or so have there been any worldwide attempts at the revival of the ancient ways of the Teutons. At present, there are many groups in the United States and Europe engaged in the work of reviving the elder traditions of the Teutonic folk. The practice of the Teutonic forms of magic is the birthright of most readers of this book by virtue and the fact that you have been born into the life stream of an English-speaking Teutonic nation. This is your most natural, organic tradition to deal with magically. You already speak its language in the most literal sense. The Teutonic tradition of magic has long suffered from two kinds of problems. First, there has been a vast ignorance concerning its existence and deep roots in the folk soul. The native organic traditions of the Europeans, be they the Celts or the Teutonic, were submerged under the false cultural prestige of the Greco-Roman and Judeo-Christian worlds. This burden was only thrown off with the help of scholarship and magical work in the past few hundred years. This research showed what vast, natural, authentic, magical, and religious traditions are to be found in our own cultures. The second problem has been the misguided use of these traditions. In this century alone, we have seen how Teutonic symbolism has been used not to liberate, but to enslave and to destroy. This does not necessarily have anything to do with the true practice of Teutonic magic, but it does show the incredible storehouse of power available in its symbolism. Now, into that topic alone. The power of Teutonic symbolism and how it has been negatively impacted. We all know what happened in Germany. We all know what happened using Aryan lore and misguided principles that have nothing to do with a Satru Teutonic beliefs or anything pure in that form um, have basically been abused to the point where our religious symbols are now bastardized in the Judeo-Christian world, in the modern Western world. Anybody sees um, the symbols of the sun or um, lightning bolts, and they immediately assume racism, 
when the Teutonic peoples were some of the most tolerant, the Aryans were not a single group. They started out that way, but so many different civilizations integrated into the Aryan culture from Rome all the way to India. So we're talking about a culture of people that were very much traders, ambassadors, and travelers. Uh, they, they, they were seeking knowledge. And still to this day, most people in the Germanic faith will seek knowledge. Knowledge, modern knowledge, elder knowledge, it doesn't matter. We're all curious and we find that to be in our natures. Um, I, as a young man with a Catholic descended father, had many times been brought to Christian churches and the such. And I never felt proper there. I never felt like I was part of the flock. Um, I had a panic attack in a church, um, a revivalist church, healing sessions, laying of the hands, the whole nine yards, and they were referring to people as sheep, and I flipped out. I was not a sheep. I never have been a sheep. I have always been a wolf of my own path. Um, and at about 16, I started looking down the path of my German grandfather and my German grandmother and where their roots were and found Norse Germanic religion and Woden and um, the faith that I currently practice and that I am researching constantly. Uh, I have been since I was a teenager reading and reading and reading. Um, you know, I find so many similarities between the Odinist religions and Christianity and the Garden of Eden and the apples is the biggest one. The Garden of Eden, the temptation of Eve and the apples or deception with apples that are granting eternal life and knowledge. Um, and the Garden of Iduna, the story of Loki and the apples in the Garden of Iduna. Um, they're very similar. They have very many parallels. Um, I find that people researching the history of the Teutons will find bases of Gnosticism, Christianity, Roman Catholicism, and many other religions are based in the Teutonic people's beliefs and practices. Um, so, over time, I'm going to be doing a couple more videos discussing the Teutonic people, their magic, rune magic. Um, it's where our it's where our faith came from. It's where the Germanic people originated from the Teutons. So. In the future, I hope to do a couple more videos. I'm going to finish the reading of um, Edward Thorson's book, Teutonic Magic. Um, it's not a it's not a very big book, it's very basic, but it has the most essential basic information in it. If you've been through the Eddas and you've heard the stories of the runes and you go through the basic book of runes, even the little book of runes by Edward Thorson. Um, great, great material. Oh, excuse me. I have a book called A Little Bit of Runes by Cassandra Eason. Recommend it. Rune Lore by Edred Thorson. That's the one. Rune Lore by Edred Thorson. Anybody interested in 
Norse mysticism, Norse mythology, the runes, the origins of rune lore. This is the one. Easy to read, easy to understand. Concepts that are so simple and relatable that anybody can get into it. Um, that'll be the next book I get into beyond this one. You guys have a good day. Keep the old gods alive.